Hello, welcome to the latest edition of DBE TV News. This bulletin is every Friday on the DBE TV channel 122 on Open View at 12 p.m. and on Bricks TV channel 509 at 4.30 in the afternoon if you are a Star Set subscriber, also on Fridays. Or watch it on the Department of Basic Education's YouTube channel. My name is Tsehohacho Moachi. The leading stories this week. The Basic Education Department honors and congratulates the best performing districts and schools during the annual National Education Excellence Awards. With April being Autism Awareness Month, Gauteng Education MEC Banyaza Lesufi has launched the province's activities and thanked teachers who work in special needs schools. The Basic Education Department has launched the Education Plus initiative to enable girls to thrive, be safe, and be empowered. Provinces supported by the Basic Education Department continue to host Presidential Youth Employment Initiative workshops as the sector enters the third phase of the project. This week, we hear from the Eastern Cape on the first two phases and lessons learned. We end this bulletin on a positive note. Learners from the Josini area in Guazu Natal can breathe a sigh of relief when going to school after a bridge over the Utlanjana River has now been built. We would love to hear from you on any stories or ideas you may have. Do get in touch with us on Twitter at DBE underscore SA and at DBE TV News. Facebook DBE SA, Instagram DBE SA. You can use the hashtag DBE News. Let's start here. Basic Education Minister Angie Mutecha and Deputy Dr. Rajainam Haule have congratulated all the winners in the annual National Education Excellence Awards. The eighth edition of the awards took place in Durban under the theme Celebrating Excellence in Districts and Schools and Rebuilding Back Better with Integrity. The awards program was introduced in 2014 to celebrate and recognize the remarkable work done by districts and schools and to acknowledge various district officials who firmly guide schools to adhere to the core business of the schooling system, which is to deliver quality learning and teaching. The 75 districts across all nine provinces are the crucial interface of the basic education sector in identifying best practices, sharing information and providing support to schools. <coughs> These men and women who are here do believe in success, not only success, but in value. So today we converge here on the shores of the Indian Ocean to honor men and women of value and the best amongst us in the sector. In them we see the best of ourselves. To honor education mandarins is not an act of vanity, but of love for those amongst us who risk life and give the all and pour themselves out for our children. And I hasten to say, it's no time for us to celebrate indeed, but I think we have the right to also to take a pause and say thank you to those who just keep the system ashore and push it up to greater heights. And the most important thing that they do for us as a country is to add value and make sure that as a sector, we are a sector of value to our community. Indeed, we are going to celebrate the exploits of districts and schools and as we do that, we always have to remind ourselves that we shouldn't lose focus. And the purpose of our education <coughs> mandarins this year, the purpose as education mandarins is to open doors of learning widely and at all times ensure that no child is left behind. Our purpose is to ensure that every child, regardless of their parents' social economic status, has enough stationary, nutritional food, qualified teacher, decent sanitation, and the care that they need in a very secure environment. So today's National Education Awards do allow us to shift focus away from the brilliance of individual teachers to celebrate the heroic act
performed at the school and district level by teams. And I can say we were very honored beginning of the year or the end of last year when we honored the Best Teachers Awards. And for me, the best thing that we took also from those awards, which really was very happening, was to see the top, top teachers in very young people, which really gives us hope that the sector is alive, it's growing, it really is energized. Motecha expressed her gratitude to all who ensure learning and teaching continues despite the challenges in the basic education sector. And if there's any person in the sector that I respect most, is the principals, the teachers, the second managers, and the districts, because they are the ones on a daily basis are interacting with our core business. And we do believe as a sector or as a department that without functioning district, uh, education districts, there can be no school that can serve as, cent as centers of academic excellence. It is clear that the skies are, 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 are dark, are clear, but indeed the excellence that you inculcate in your teachers as managers builds resilience and a desire to shine. And hopefully the winning mentality on display here today will be ingrained into the broader body of the teaching cohort throughout the basic edu ed education ecosystem. Basic Education Minister Angie Motecha has held the two-day district conference on education reform hosted by the NECT as a success. Motecha addressed the gathering held in Durban this week. The conference focused on the performance of education districts in the context of the disruptions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. And we all know that the reforms in basic education unambiguously speak to the call of our Freedom Charter which will be turning 67 years this year, that doors of learning and culture must be opened. And since, again, I'm also very excited about, I think, a difficult uh, situation with the shift of the early childhood development to social, from social development to basic education. I know it's not an easy one, but I think it's a very important move. I always tell the, <coughs> the story GM knows that when we went to the SACMEC assessments, I also spoke to the Minister of Shells. to say, but, you know South Africans, say what you like, but actually very smart people. And yeah. that's why sometimes we get very disappointed when things don't work our way. Mm -hmm. And I said to, to, to her, it was a, a, a female, but then not the current minister, how do you get it right? And strangely enough, the first question she asked me when the kids start school, I said, see, she says, hey, you won't catch us. We're three years ahead of you. <laughs> so we lay the foundations, we remediate, we sort all sorts of things. That by the time kids go to school, they're school ready. We know who are children with challenges, with difficulties. So when we start teaching, we're teaching them. We're educated, we're teaching them now. We're not really preparing them. It says all your kids with dislexia and other things, you pick them up for motor coordination. We have to, unlike a grade one, you have to be picking up that this child has a motor coordination problem. This one is dyslexic, this one can't see properly. He says all the time we clear off that by the time they go to school, they're school ready, not in terms of levels of development, but holistically. So that our teachers know from the records from zero. They know what they're receiving, and if you had enough time to prepare for four or five years before they come to our schools. Gauteng Education MEC Banyaza Sufi has thanked teachers for the work they do, especially those in special needs schools. With April being Autism Awareness Month, the Provincial Education Department has officially launched the province's activities, which commemorated World Autism Awareness Day in Johannesburg. The purpose of the activities are to raise awareness about autism and emphasize the need to accept individuals with autism as an integral part of society and improve their quality of life. Now, autism or autism spectrum disorder refers to a broad range of conditions characterized by challenges with social skills, repetitive behaviors, speech and nonverbal communication. Because autism is a spectrum disorder, each person with autism has a distinct set of strengths and challenges. 
The ways in which people with autism learn, think and problem solve can range from highly skilled to severely challenged. The World Health Organization reports that one in 160 children are autistic. Of what we need to commit ourselves to do, that we know, and that is why it's called the spectrum, we know each and every child is different. We know each and every child is not the same. Therefore, we might struggle with our curriculum, but the quality is the same, and everyone must be touched with the manner and everything that we are doing in our schools. And for that, I want to send a special, special, special message to all our educators. Without you, we are empty educators. The Presidential Youth Employment Initiative has entered the third phase in the basic education sector. Stay tuned to find out what lessons the Eastern Cape Province has learned during the first two phases. I am a nurturer, like you. The real men stand against gender-based violence. I get hurt, like you. If I am a victim of violence, I too will not be ashamed to report violence and abuse. I hate it when someone violates me, like you. In a violent situation, there is power in walking away. I will not take part in fights at school. All I want is to feel safe, to feel loved and to be free to show love, like you. I cry when I'm hurt, because to feel is to be human. I pledge to be more open about my emotions. Make it part of the new normal for young boys to be nurtured and loved, to freely express themselves and to show love in a safe, inclusive way. We have different gender identities, but first, we are human. If you need assistance to help your child, contact Childline on 08000 555 5. The Basic Education Department has launched the Education Plus Initiative to enable girls to thrive, to be safe and empowered. The launch took place together with the five UN agencies, UN Programme on HIV AIDS, UN Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, that's UNESCO, UN Population Fund, UN Children's Fund, that's UNICEF, and UN Women. The initiative is a high-level drive to accelerate action and investments to expand success to secondary education for all youths and to advance adolescent girls' and young women's health, education and rights in sub-Saharan Africa. Human rights advocate, deputy chairperson of SANEC and founder of Access Chapter 2, Steve Litzike, says young women need to be empowered at all times. We can only do that if we allow young people themselves to join in this initiative. They join the forces. whether it's efforts led by government or civil society, they join to accelerate, to champion their own issues as well. We must engage adolescent girls, young women, all young people in their diversity. We must empower them and by doing so, placing them in the forefront of our response, equip them, and ensure that we go beyond the health sector. We must go beyond the health sector. Dr. Regina Mhaule, the Deputy Minister for the Department of Basic Education, has emphasized that empowered girls are the empowered women of the future. In response to the agency required to effectively address the alarming numbers of adolescent girls and young women heavily affected by HIV infection, early unintended pregnancy, and gender-based violence and femicide, which affect their survival, their well-being, and their human rights and fundamental freedoms. This multi-sectoral initiative represents a, right, a rights-based gender-responsive action agenda for adolescent girls and young women to lead healthy, secure, and fulfilling lives while paving their way to vibrant futures. The rewards will be the far reaching into the longer term, which 
intergenerational uh, effects. This work is premised on the relief that empowered girls are the empowered women of the future. Dr. Mahaole added that the work that will be embarked on through the launch should not be taken for granted. The work that we are about to embark on with the UN agencies is regarded as work of soft issues, but it has the potential of altering the child's life. We should not trivialize or take this work for granted. So I hope that what images from this launch will strengthen and support the already existing programs within the sector and nurture those that require improvement of efficiencies. We should pay particular emphasis to evidence-based programs that were crippled by COVID-19. Eastern Cape Education Department has welcomed the inputs made by those who attended the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative workshop in the province. The workshop, held in collaboration with the Department of Basic Education, was to reflect on Phase 1 and Phase 2 of the PYEI. Officials assessed the impact of the initiative, challenges and lessons learned during the past two phases in a bid to ensure the third phase of the project runs smoothly. Eastern Cape Education Head of Department Dr. Naledi Mbude says PYEI workshops assisted the government to ensure everyone involved is wiser. The success in the first two phases is the fact that we have a lot of young uh, children who, because of COVID-19, we know that the Eastern Cape has a lot of families that are child-headed or have grandparents looking after their kids uh, because their mothers or fathers are working, whether it's in the Western Cape or Gauteng or any of the provinces that, unlike us, you know, um, have a lot of business opportunities. So we have that cohort of learners who, who are uh, left on their own because of the deaths of COVID-19. Now, the success of, of, the, of the two first phases was the fact that we had young people in schools who would be there just to listen to, um, to the young uh, learners out there and just to be there for them. Because teachers, because of, of, of teaching you know, during COVID-19, the anxiety levels are probably high. The fact that you have to wear masks, social distancing, and making sure that learners still make it and save the academic year might not have that time to lend an ear to learners in the same manner that they did before. So these young people provided that opportunity, provided that safety net, that there is somebody else that they can go to, there's somebody else that they can report to if there's anything, in the absence of somebody at home who can do that for them. So that is our big success because we were able to provide emotional support because children need that throughout their lives. Whether it is the academic support that they need, whether they are reading champions or a ICT related, or just being there in the absence of somebody else other than the teacher. Dr. Mbude continued to thank the education and general assistance in the Eastern Cape province. They are an important part of the education process. We need them more than ever because the sector needs anyone and everyone who can help us to shoulder the responsibility of making sure that Bonke Abandonagabetu, because all children are ours, whether they are children with learning disabilities or dis uh, um, uh, 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 challenges in their lives, or whether it's learners who appear probably sometimes good, they are fine, but emotionally they are crumbling because of the various issues, societal issues in the main, or whether it is because children need somebody there to lean on them. We need them and let's, let's learn together from the mistakes uh, of, the, of, the, of being in the, in the learning phases and let's make sure that those we can learn from those mistakes so that we can move together. So I'm saying to them, the sector needs them and thank you very much for offering their services to the department. The general and education assistants have been welcomed by schools in the province with Principal Gosinatin Bobi saying their presence at his school has made a huge difference in teaching and learning. <laughs> Oye Akuni, Oenza, Ubango, Kamanani, Avantuan, Ufumane, O staff, Esimbalwa, Aku, if you can go to the program, Yenzu Chinjo, Uba, Abandu, Abangabasebins, Pagati, where's Golo Zetu, Balikela, Apongo, Kusikwazi, Uba, Uti, Wizindo, Ezipa, Pagati, when nine pillars, Esijongena, Zosika, support teaching and learning. Ekfunegas is NZ, Ekfunegas Prinsek, Biz Colo Zetu Zuz Colo, Kubas Mufune, Sitlas Managers, Prinsek, Zi name Pumelelo, Ez Nazo, Ez Azi, Doza, Ez Apilas, 
Therefore, go figure go up again. Go go. Si figure sa kuazi. O kuenza into obana. Yonge ipi la si kuazi. O ku yoya ya figure yenza ultincho ulku. Kanga kuba ngondi teta nawe. Uya kuazu kuti ubo nusange neke iti inba. I environment conducive for u teaching and learning. Usange neke iti ni abona ngogo ke iti ni. Ukona umtu omile opa o GSA. Esuna umtata ke ngoba kwa zikolo za epen areas. Umtata opa i security officer. Deskaje singe nazo. Ukona umtu njalo ngoku. O control i access of i visitors. Engena ka pagati. Uya kuazu ubo nangoku. I nga zitri nyiwe. I lo ni jalo njalo mbo. Yeye kukabu ambi kuku Aba seven za Bezi zikolo Bezi kate zino kete Ika sige na boti Na kitu deep rural areas Ngoku bakona Bona OTSA Sute ngume chini Bafundi sinte lo kwenza Kwenza Ikli I toilet zetu Ziklini Kanga kwa Daily Baya kwa zikini Sike kwa ziklini Kandi bisi zikini Sika wae kanga I classroom I conducive for teaching And learning Kwa bi Iyezi Zika le zikini Sike Nge cleanliness ye I classroom So kumandi Kakulungoku Sia kwa zupe Fumula Kasi fumane Ezi Iyezi Coming up Learners in Guazuru Natal Can now get to school On time And drive After a bridge Was built over a river In the Chizini area the National School Nutrition Program, the NSNP, is a government intervention program aimed at enhancing learner well-being and learner participation in education. The NSNP aims to improve food security for learners by serving a nutritious meal. The NSNP focuses on the food safety from farm to plate. This food value chain ensures that safe and nutritious meals are served to learners. Compliance at all critical control points is non-negotiable so that the end users receive safe and quality meals. This video series promotes and emphasizes good food handling practices throughout the NSMP food value chain. Strict compliance to health regulations needs to be followed during storage and transportation of food. All warehouses and school kitchens must have a certificate of acceptability from the local municipality that shows compliance with health and safety regulations. Schools need to check the quality and quantity of food during delivery. Food must be transported in closed vehicles to adhere to safety regulations. This video series showcases the NSMP food value chain, how the program supports good food handling practices food safety compliance in critical control points such as the warehouses, delivery vehicles, storage, preparation, cooking, serving and disposal requirements. Storerooms in schools must be clean, well ventilated and secure. Food items should be checked for expiry dates before preparation. The volunteer food handlers prepare meals on all school days following a provincial menu. The program intends to address barriers of teaching and learning associated with hunger and malnutrition. On a daily basis, more than 9 million children receive a nutritious meal through the program. Meals provided to learners follow the food-based dietary guidelines as stipulated by the Department of Health, which offer a variety of food items, including a daily protein dish, starch dish, as well as a fresh vegetable or fruit. Food waste should be discarded in bins with lids to keep rodents and flies away. The joy of learners taking part in school activities knowing there is a nourishing meal served daily through the National School Nutrition Program. It shows every child is valued in the education system where their potential can be developed towards building a prosperous future. The community of Josini in KwaZulu Natal have welcomed with excitement a bridge that has been built to assist learners to get to school. Learners from Jigi High School and Madonela Primary had to balance on logs to avoid falling into the Uhlanjana River. The 9.6 million rand bridge was built by the Development Bank of South Africa and the Mutsipe Foundation. KZN Education MEC Gwazim Shengu says this bridge will assist learners to get to school now with ease. Mshengu has described the bridge as a success 
Indeed, uh, we are quite happy um, about this project, which uh, has been constructed under the auspices of DPSA together with the Mosebe Foundation. As we recall, that uh, this place was um, a very difficult place for learners in particular, coming from both areas because there are schools on both sides, and uh, learners had to cross this river uh, in order to access the schools. And when the water levels were too high, uh, it became too risky for them uh, to cross uh, to, to access schools. But uh, even if the water levels uh, are low as we can see them today, it's always risky for learners really to be subjected into it to cross a river to access education. So when this matter uh, came to the attention, we then had a discussion with um, DPSA uh, to say, can, can they put a hand uh, in, in helping us really to solve that particular challenge? And uh, they then took a lead in terms of um, uh, everything that uh, resulted into this project that we're unveiling today. They, they consulted, they contacted the Mosaic Foundation, uh, a substantial donation in the construction of this week. So they really, the issue of learners in the risk of the of this area is now. We will talk about it as least that uh, some of these learners had to cross the river. But today, they will walk uh, safely through this pedestrian bridge. And uh, we call it a bridge to success because um, for, for the community of this area to, to succeed and to develop, they need to have their children uh, educated. And if you have many stumbling blocks in the education of, their, of, of the children, the children will drop out, they will get demotivated, and the communities of this area will never succeed. So that is why we are calling it a bridge to success. So the learners now will then be able to, to access education with ease, and then their future prospects are quite bright. That's how we end this bulletin on Channel 122 on Open View, on YouTube and on BRICS TV Channel 509 Starset. Before we go, with some ECD functions now part of the Basic Education Department, here are some facts. All programs registered with the Department of Social Development will automatically be registered with the Basic Education Department. The DBE will also start registering all unregistered ECD programs using the same registration process that the DSD has been using. On that note, thank you for watching. Thank you.